want to start the broadcast today with an article I read in the Wall Street Journal uh, titled, Marijuana is More Dangerous Than You Think. As legalization spreads, more Americans are becoming heavy users of cannabis. And this is despite its links to violence and mental illness. A new book out by the author of this Wall Street article, Alex uh, Berenson, uh, the book titled Tell Your Children the Truth About Marijuana, Mental Illness and Violence. Well, over the past 30 years, a, a shrewd and very expensive lobbying campaign has made Americans more tolerant of marijuana. In fact, John Boehner now, former Speaker of the House, is, uh, is touting marijuana as the pathway to becoming a millionaire. But more than 200 million Americans are now living in states where they have legalized marijuana for both medical or recreational use. And yet even as marijuana has become more socially acceptable, psychiatrists and uh, epidemiologists have, have reached a consensus that it, it presents more serious risks than people often realize. The number of Americans who use cannabis heavily is nonetheless soaring. In 2006, about 3 million Americans reported using the drug at least 300 times a year. By 2017, just a couple of years ago, that number had increased to 8 million. And they are consuming cannabis uh, that is far more potent than ever before. If you think back, if you think back to the 1970s, most marijuana contained less than 2% THC. Many users today are using marijuana that contains 20 to 25% to the active uh, hallucinogenic. And many uh, users prefer extracts that are nearly pure THC. And that despite the fact that it's now very, very clear, the evidence is in, that marijuana can cause psychosis, a high risk factor for violence. Cannabis fuels violence in psychotic people through its tendency to cause paranoia. Some advocates are claiming that legalization will reduce violent crime. I think of Senator Cory Booker, a Democrat from New Jersey. He's one of them. Uh, and uh, this is despite the fact that all of the statistics are against what Cory Booker is touting. For centuries, people all over the world have understood and understood clearly that cannabis causes mental illness and violence, just as they have known that opioids cause addiction and overdose. Hard data on the relationship between marijuana and madness dates back 150 years. And so this is nothing new, but people are ignoring the evidence. Mental illness and violence that follow cannabis ought to be far too widespread to ignore. Again, the article worth reading in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the book is coming out. Uh, it will be out, uh, let me see, by, I guess, tomorrow. So it's coming out quickly. You know, I actually did an acronym uh, on marijuana. Uh, it's titled, Is America Going to Pot? I use P-O-T as the acronym. And uh, as I've mentioned before in the Bible Answer Man broadcast, because of its inherent dangers, uh, I, I think it's, it's time for us to not only know, but be able to remember and communicate to others the dangers of the reefer culture in addition to the links which it has to serious mental illness and violence, uh, there are other psychological problems. Memory impairment, hallucinations, 
sleep deprivation, and the list goes on. Physical maladies range from respiratory illness, cardiovascular disease, to detectable alterations in the chemistry of the brain. Think about that for the kids, young kids, that are uh, part of the reefer uh, set. Uh, just as there are uh, psychophysical dangers, there are occult dangers as well. In China, shamans employ cannabis to connect with ancestors in the spirit world. Sufi Muslims use cannabis as a contrivance for various spiritual explorations. And in the West, Rastafarians use uh, weed to indulge in various religious rituals. And while achieving higher states of consciousness or discovering secret truths or becoming one with the cosmic consciousness of the universe might sound glamorous, the skeletal remains of such perilous spiritual diversions continue to multiply worldwide. To put it plainly, when people are smoking or eating pot, there is simply no objective way for them to control dosages of tetrahydrocannabinol, the psychoactive chemical in marijuana. A dosage of as little as 7 milligrams of THC can be an unwelcome gateway to spiritual and psychophysical maladies. And while it is true that the Bible does not specifically deal with smoking pot, its prohibitions against intoxication apply. We're called to be stewards of both the physical and the metaphysical aspects of our humanity, and to fail to do that is to sin against the very one who created us or knit us together in our mother's wombs. I, I, I want in context of this to talk about another addiction as the quote of the day. And this is an addiction that has changed the average attention span from 12 to 8 seconds in the last few years. Uh, columnist Andrew Sullivan confessed that he had become a manic information addict who suffered from distraction sickness. So there are a lot of ways in which we can misuse the body. The illness uh, Sullivan realized wasn't unique to him. It was epidemic. And he says this, and I'll use this for the quote of the day, Facebook soon gave everyone the equivalent of their own blog and their own audience. More and more people got a smartphone, connecting them instantly to a deluge of febrile content, forcing them to call and absorb and assimilate the online torrent as relentlessly as I had once. Twitter emerged as a form of instant blogging of micro-thoughts. Users were as addicted to the feedback as I had long been and even more prolific. Then the apps descended like the rain to inundate what was left of our free time. Now, this is a quote that is part of the book that we are offering as a resource of the month. You can find it on the web at equip.org. It's written by Jay Richards. It's titled The Human Advantage. One of the things that Richards does point out in, in balance is that gluttony does not prove that food is bad, and a Facebook fetish doesn't prove that the Internet is evil. So the point here is if you use social media platforms, you want to use them in a proper or responsible fashion. They open up education, so there is a positive benefit. This is education for everyone, no matter where you live. Uh, they give you new skills. They help you work with people that you might never have met in person. They make research so much faster and more fruitful. As I found in writing my books, the internet can be a tremendous benefit. But again, it can be an addiction if it is not properly used, an addiction that leads in a very, very bad direction. Again, the resource of the month, The Human Advantage, The Future of American Work in an Age of Smart Machines by Jay Richards. You might wonder how this actually associates with the Christian worldview. Read the book and you will find out. Again, available on the web. You can order it in a safe, secure fashion. You can support the ministry on the web at equip.org. Or when you write me at Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. When we come back from the break, we'll go to your phone calls, number to dial 888-ASK-HANK. <laughs> 